Hello, fifth graders. Does this look familiar? If you were at Endeavor in third grade, it probably does. This was a project that we did um, after learning about a Canadian artist named Sandra. Oh, I always say her name wrong. Um, Silverswig. Ah, I don't know how to say it. I should have looked that up before I spoke. Um, we talked all about color theory and um, we used oil pastels on dark paper and they were beautiful. Anywho, um, we're not doing the same project again, but I think that the artists that we learn about today, I think you're going to find some similarities in just the portrait style, the um, asymmetry um, on the faces. I just wanted to refresh your memory. If you weren't here in third grade, um, don't sweat it. Today can be brand new learning for you, and that works out also. Okay, what's not brand new? This. So if you know it, say it with me. I know it still says repeat after me. I bet you've got it. I am an artist. I am a creator of ideas and a solver of problems. Sometimes the problems are on my paper. Sometimes they're with my neighbor. Sometimes they're inside of myself. But I know I can solve problems because mistakes, speaking of, come on, click. There we go. Because mistakes are opportunities to learn and grow. And I am proud to be an artist. And I am proud of you. Thank you to those of you who continue to create and make art and share art with me, whether you're sending in an email. Um, I've had a couple of videos, which is fun. People figuring out how to record videos and um, send those to me. And then also those of you that are dropping your artwork into your own slides in, in the art classroom. It's a beautiful way of sharing, but also of, of keeping those for yourself so that you have your own um, record of digital art. Because let's face it, sometimes we lose our papers, right? Okay, here's the plan for today. Whoops, let me get out of the way. I'm blocking the words. There we go. We are gonna learn about an American artist named Kimmy Cantrell, and um, he works primarily with clay, and I'll show you some examples. And then we'll actually um, learn a little bit more about him plus get to see him speak. So there's actually a short little three minute video on YouTube um, with him talking. It's so cool. It's so cool to actually listen to the artist who creates the work that we're learning about and um, just to hear him and see him talk, I think is phenomenal because let's be honest, a lot of the artists that I teach you about, they're no longer living. Rest in peace, artists. But um, Kimmy Cantrell is, so we can learn from him. All right, you've probably been looking at this picture the whole time I was talking. And I got to tell you, I just realized two days ago, if you turn your head sideways, that part of the face is actually the same design as the American flag. I've looked at this 20 times and never noticed that until just the other day. Super cool. Here's another one of his, he calls them masks, although they are not masks to, to be worn. And we'll talk more about what they really are um, and how they're meant to be displayed. Super cool. All right, so here's Kimmy Cantrell. You can see about the size of his work in this picture. I mean, he's sitting down, but still pretty big work. I mean, you know, some of you might've been envisioning things were this big. Um, and they're not. Now I'm going to open this up. This is a Prezi. Um, um, what do they call that? Presentation. Duh, that's what it was. Um, this is side note for my techies out there who love to create like Google Slides or PowerPoints. Um, maybe you're even a, I don't know, what are you? You're a TikToker. I don't know who you are. But this is another form of presentation that um, I haven't used for years. I really got into it a few years ago, and I think this one's fun. So let me just show you kind of how it works. So it starts off almost looking like a Google slide, but then it activates, and it shows you a bigger scene, and then it's going to zoom in. So you're not making one of these, you guys. I'm just sharing this with you because some of you are so techno technologically savvy. Um, this might be a fun challenge for you if you feel like you've mastered Google Slides. So... I'm going to keep clicking. I can click two ways. I can hit the arrow button or I can actually pick one of the spots I want to um, zoom in on, but I'm going to hit the arrow. So here we go. 
Kimmy Cantrell, he was largely self-taught. That means he didn't go to art school. He didn't go to college and, and study art. Um, he did art in high school and really loved it. But when he went to college, he went into business and, and management. And he graduated from college and he got his job in, in business and management. And I'm sure went to work every day and probably liked it. Except there was kind of something missing. And that was making art because he loved making art. So he picks up some clay just, you know, to, for fun. And he said he made um, a vase. And then after that, he made some bowls. And then after that, he started to make these faces. And then he took a risk and he said, okay, am I so passionate about making art that I'm willing to step away from the security of my job? Which is, I know that's like an adult problem, um, but he did it. He did it. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to be an artist instead of a, a manager, you know, with a steady paycheck. And it worked out for him because here we are learning about him. Um, he lives across the country. So he's done very well. Big risk, though. Um, here are four of his relief sculptures. So earlier I said he calls them a mask, but I wanted to use a different term. Relief sculptures. So I think you kind of know what a sculpture is. So I'm going to grab um, this planter. Oh, you can't even see it. There it goes. It's got a face on it. Um, a, a sculpture is usually in the round. So this happens to literally be round. But it just, when you say in the round, it means you could walk around it and see it from all angles. He has created something called, making messes over here, called a relief sculpture. And I have a little teeny tiny one. I think if you did the um, color wheel, activity with us a few weeks ago um i showed you this so maybe i'm gonna make myself a little bigger for a second there we go so here is a relief sculpture that is going to mean and the prezi is going to tell us this in a second but it's flat on the back so it's not a sculpture in the round although this sticks out pretty far um kimmy cantrell sculptures are flat they're like slabs or pancakes and then he builds them out a little bit but not like this this one is like really three-dimensional but still flat so it's meant to be displayed by hanging it on the wall in fact if i tilt it you can see there's a hole back there so that's how this is supposed to be hung um kimmy cantrell's work is also meant to be hung or get myself out of the way again you can see how he's created kind of these stands um, actually, I do too, if you want to know the truth. I have this little guy sitting on this stand. Um, I don't know why, it just is. And it just sits there and I look at it and it reminds me of the person that, that um, I got it with. And so it's fun. But his stands are meant for display and they're much bigger because the masks obviously are so much bigger. If we were to see these from the side, they'd be about, mm, can you see my fingers? There we go. Probably about that, ah, there we go, that thick. Think of it as like if you love pancakes, two pancakes stacked or maybe three pancakes stacked. That's about the thickness of his clay. And they are called slabs, actually. Oh, and I told you, it was just going to tell us this. They're not really meant to be seen from the back. This type of sculpture is usually hung on the wall and takes up less space than in the round. All right. Oopsie. Did you see what happened? I didn't hit the button. I hit the picture. Whoa, who's getting dizzy? Okay. Um, it's a kind of a fun activity when you see multiple things in a group looking for similarities and differences. Oh, my first similarity I was going to say, look, their noses are the same because I was looking at the two outside ones, but the middle one is not the same at all. Um, he uses the same kind of um, circle inside of a circle for the eyes. Um, he puts kind of like a um, the same half circle shape, although it's a little different over here. I don't know. What else are you guys seeing? Um, I'm seeing the same because they're all different but the shapes he's not using a typical like smooth you know oval shape for the head so he's got some different shapes in there some are angular 
Some look like a chunk has been taken out. Some we have things added to. Um, they all have different colors added. I don't know. Yell. Tell me what you see. Just kidding. If you yell, you'll you know scare your baby sister or something. So they're all, oh, we should have known this. They're all asymmetrical. What's asymmetrical or asymmetry? You know it. It's a math word. What is it? What is it? It's simply not the same on both sides. So should we go back? You want to look again? Let's look now. They are not symmetrical. In fact, these three are all pretty exaggerated. Like their eyes are, are uneven. Um, the nostrils, there's not two nostrils. There's only one and it kind of goes off to the one side. So that immediately makes them lack symmetry or be asymmetrical. All right, we can keep going, but we got to get to some work today. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so that is Prezi, P R E Z I. Um, when I used to do it, it was free. I don't know if it's still free, but um, you don't have to do it. That's not your assignment today. That's just a bonus for my techies out there. Um, speaking of another bonus. Let's listen to Kimmy Cantrell. Make sure I have the sound up. My grandmother used to tell me all the time, keep your hook in the water. If you don't keep your hook in the water, you can't catch any fish. And so uh, I think art's the same way. You're gonna just keep, keep fishing, keep fishing. Sooner or later you'll get a bite. And other times there's there's a particular piece that you want to do and you start working on it and sometimes it comes out really good and sometimes uh it kind of morphs into something else so that window of opportunity is just a, a spontaneous moment when stars all line up and something special comes out i like red i use red in probably 95 percent of my pieces um, I just love that color, and there's something luscious and and and, and uh, very sensual about red lips. The, the human lips are like fingerprints. Each set of lips that I do is different. You know, it's kind of like uh, they said that Billie Holiday never sang the same song the same way twice. You know, you comes first. Not all the time, because sometimes. I like to take a piece of clay and just spontaneously sit down and just create a piece from that strip of clay. But a lot of times those sketches, the ones that are special, I look at them and go, ah, you know, I think I'll work on that. And it takes about about 10 days to create a piece from start to finish. In the beginning, I started doing the vessels and the bowls. And I started putting faces in some of the bowls that I had because I love faces, I always like faces. I was in the studio one day and I and I just decided I would do a mask because I always liked masks. And I basically was taking my fingers and just kind of digging into the clay and just creating these faces, these real raw, you know, images of a mask. I did one, I put it to the side, I did another one, I put it to the side, and then I did a third one. Something came over me. I think Jackson Pollock called it breaking the code. But I remember I broke down and I just cried. I just knew at that moment that I had just, I discovered something that was, that was mine, you know. I put my job in 1999. And I think because I'm self-taught, it's always been very surreal that I've been able to, to, to make this work and, and make a living doing it. Um, and, 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 and I love doing it so much. It's such a passion. Um, it seems like I wake up every day uh, thinking about something new to create something new to say. Taking a lump of clay and creating something from basically nothing is still magical to me. Isn't that cool to hear from someone else? Oops, it always does this to me. It starts over every time. There we go. To so just like hear from the artist who creates all of these. 
I thought that was interesting. There was a point, did you see when he was holding one of his um, masks in his hands and it was smaller? I'm thinking more and more though, I bet that's like a practice model kind of, and then he does the bigger ones. So, okay, we're gonna get close now, we're close. What are we doing? Cause you know, I can't give you clay right now and I can't give you glaze and I can't bring it to the kiln and stick it in there, but we can kind of modify this idea and um, create something on paper. And I've done this before. So I'm going to show you a video with me giving directions. So it's me, but it's not really me because it's been a while. Um, and there's a beginning where it might be a little bit weird where I say, hey, you just finished a unit on portraits. Um, you didn't just finish a unit on portraits. This is an older video, but I didn't have the examples at home to re-record the video. So, you know, don't get confused, you guys. If you feel like you've missed something because I say something, it didn't happen. This was like three years ago. But we're going to follow the steps, and it's a fun project. Here we go. Uh, we're going to spend today trying something new. We've got another abstract portrait design. But this time it starts off very differently. Um, as you're looking at those straight lines, notice how they separate the facial features. And the way you get those straight lines is simply folding your paper. So you'll begin with a white piece of paper and your job is to fold it. Try to fold it about five times maybe, different directions, get different angles. And then as you're noticing, there's um, straight lines which were drawn by a ruler. So those ruler lines actually will tell you which spaces you can then add eyes, nose, and a mouth. Maybe some of those uh, features will share the same space, or maybe you use the spaces from the folds to create different shapes. So I see in this one, there's a mouth in that triangle, above it a nose, above that two eyes. The lines just create the abstract look. Meanwhile, the rest of it is just filled with the face. This one, I know the artist tried hard, but there's too much blank space. So you really wanna draw big, Think about filling up your entire paper, but it all starts with those folded lines. All right, here's a review. You're going to get a white piece of paper and you're going to fold it five times. Then you're going to take a ruler and trace over the folded lines with a black marker. Then we're switching to pencil. You're definitely going to draw your face with a pencil. If you like what you've done, you can then trace that with marker. That might be the only thing you get done today. If you have more time and you want to start to add color, we're going to use colored markers for this step. Please remember to help with your jobs today. Please remember to save your paper and we will get back to anything that's not finished next time. Cool. So a couple of those things, obviously, I'm not going to boss you around until you have to use markers. If you want to use crayons and you have crayons at home, that's cool. If you don't have crayons at home and you just want to keep it black and white, I'll show you mine again. That's all I've done so far. So I started this the other day and I folded it. And then I first took my black marker. If you don't have a black marker, don't sweat it. But if you have a black crayon or a dark crayon or even just a colored pencil would work. So I traced over the lines and then I started to add the details. So the way I use the lines is it kind of helped me plan. So like, let's look at the nose, for example. I kind of went with that Kimmy Cantrell nose where it just goes one direction. And I use this line as my starting point. I use this line right here, the fold, to show where the top of the eyelid is above it, the bottom of the eye is down below. And I kind of went with Kimmy Cantrell eyes shapes again. Remember he had those kind of like um, half circles with the circle inside for the pupil? um what else the lips they're down there um, a much skinnier lip than the bottom lip which is kind of that asymmetry um i just now why he was or why he why i i old me young me actually was talking um i added in the ears and then i was starting to put in some patterns up here is it hair is it a hat i don't know it can be whatever i want it to be anyway why do i like this project um well let me count the ways. I like it because when you start, when we get a blank piece of paper, do I even have one sitting here? 
you know, the, the preciousness of a blank piece of paper, this isn't totally blank because it's lines. We, we tend to, as artists, like plan what we think it's going to look like. And, and it has to be like filling the space exactly like the picture in our head. When you fold it, it's taking away some of your control. It's forcing you to do, to problem solve instead of just create. Is that making sense? Because once you put those lines on your paper, they're kind of bossing you around. So this paper is totally different than what the blank paper looked like. Now you have to use those lines and use those folds and figure out your solutions. And I think that's a good challenge for you. And I think you're ready for it. So here are two examples, both of them big. They're filling up the spaces of the paper. Yeah, this one still has a lot of blank space, but if you look closely, you can see there's some pencil lines there. The artist is just not finished. Um, I like this one, how they put the eye closed. When I open, when I closed, kind of winking, but also it creates that asymmetry. In the end, you know what I want you to do. I want you to open up Google Classroom. Whoops, this is fourth grade, but same thing. Go to the classwork tab, open it up. At the very top, it'll say my artwork, fifth grade. Right there. You're going to open it because it's yours. It'll be personalized. If you've never done this before, it's kind of fun. And then um, once that opens, it's your slides. Pick a blank slide. Click one of the buttons. Insert, image, camera. Hold your artwork up to your camera. Click on the little camera button that's in the Google Slides. It'll take your picture. Maybe you're in it. Maybe you're not. And then you hit insert one more time and it drops the picture in there. I get to see it. You get to save it. Voila. The magic of technology. So that's the plan. That's the plan, man. Kimmy Cantrell. And you can look at um, you can look at his pictures. They'll stay in the Google Slides if you want to kind of get ideas once you get to this point. And you want to maybe use some of his ideas. Maybe you'll use that American flag. Maybe you'll use... You know how he repeats like circle shapes sometimes. So I don't know. Or maybe you'll just make your own. But I think that's it, you guys. So that was a long talk. Hold your paper first so that it kind of helps you um, solve problems. And then go for it. Abst I cannot wait to see your abstract faces. Not your faces. Your abstract portraits that you draw. I haven't seen you in a while. Are your faces looking abstract in real life? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it's getting weird. Can't wait to see him.